GM, GM, welcome to Web3 Academy. This is the weekly deep dive. This is a place for entrepreneurs, creators, and businesses to explore and learn how to use Web3 to transform business models and to build thriving communities. I'm Jay Bird, and I'm here to keep you on the forefront of technology so that you don't fall behind. I want to make sure you know what's going on in DAOs, what's going on in crypto, what's going on in NFTs, what's going on in blockchain. This is the stuff that you need to know so that you can stay on top of your business, stay on top of building in Web3. On today's deep dive, we're going to focus on the four ways that DAOs are going to revolutionize the way we work. Let me tell you quickly what these four ways are. Number one, True ownership and project alignment. We're going to talk about how DAOs enable ownership and an enable alignment that we really haven't seen before because of the addition of tokens. We're going to talk about the freedom that DAOs enable, freedom to work when, where, how, and on what you want. We're going to talk about increased transparency, accountability, and fairness that results from the ways in which DAOs manage their treasury and the ways in which DAOs manage their governance. And finally, we're going to talk about the ways in which experience matters so differently in DAOs. DAOs open up a great opportunity for those with a lot of experience, but also those with not a lot of experience to get involved, to contribute, and to be compensated for doing so. Okay, so what are the four ways that DAOs are going to revolutionize work? Let's talk about that. Working in a traditional office setting has been the main and sometimes only option for most people worldwide. But thanks to technological advancements and efforts to cope with COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen how flexible our work lives can be. No more traffic-filled commutes, no more office politics, no more Sunday night blues before you go back to the office. Living the dream, right? Well, not quite. The transition back to working processes is already underway. A Microsoft report found that in the near future, 50% of companies will require workers to be back in the office full time. On the other hand, 52% of workers plan to switch to flexible full time remote or hybrid employment in 2022. So there's a little bit of a, a, a mis, mismatch there. So it's no surprise that 68% of US workers are quietly or actively disengaged in their work. The consequence is unhappy employees and low productivity. Instead, let's imagine a working environment that's fair, flexible, and puts talent first. One where contributors are engaged, dedicated to an organization's goal, and producing high quality work. An environment of equality where everyone has a say in the direction of a company. Too good to be true? Hardly. Thanks to blockchain and cryptography, anyone can build or contribute to a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, and make this a reality. If you're still new to this space and you're still trying to learn about DAOs, I recommend you go back and check out our DAO overview with Brian Peters uh, so you can get up to speed on everything about what is a DAO and how they work and really the pros and cons, the challenges of DAOs. Um, a lot of challenges around working with a decentralized organization, how that, how that works and how people are doing that well. And then also the opportunity of DAOs. Uh, if you head back in a few, a uh, few weeks in our podcast, you'll be able to find that uh, interview with Brian Peters. Uh, but for today, let's jump into the four ways that DAOs are going to revolutionize the way we work. First is ownership and project alignment. So in most cases, traditional employment pays you a salary, and if you're lucky, a performance bonus. Um, caveats to this scenario would be startups and Fortune 500 executives, uh, which is a very small percentage of us who work in that manner. But um, startups, you know, that's the opportunity where you could you can often work for a small salary um, with the promise of your shares being worth something after a funding round. So, you know, high risk, high reward. Um, or uh, you can, you know, if you're 
an executive of a Fortune 500 company, then you know you have lots of opportunities to get big bonuses and get big equity. But not many of us are in that position. Obviously, that requires decades of experience um, and you know some serious networking skills. So, and even then, you're often at the mercy of a board or a higher level manager. So while you get a slice of the pie, it's monetary rather than governance ownership. Uh, which is a big distinction to make. You know, sure, uh, at some of these companies, you might get an opportunity to have ownership, but you don't have governance ownership. You just have um, shares that can get you monetary gain, uh, but not necessarily the ability to steer the direction of the company uh, in, in the ways that you believe. Uh, you still are at the mercy of somebody who makes those decisions. In DAOs, this is different. There isn't a board of directors or an executive team running the show. While there may be a leadership team, decision-making power is shared equally, meaning everyone's opinion holds the same weight. For example, in the Honey Badges DAO, members vote to choose the leadership team every three months. This process ensures that project leaders always act in members' best interests. Additionally, additionally, leaders don't have absolute power to make project decisions since members still need to vote. So rather than having a few heavyweight decision makers, an organization has, the, has many small shareholders, and put shareholders in quotes, this structure results in better contributor engagement since they have skin in the game. So you have this opportunity in a DAO where not only do you have more ownership in the form of tokens, but you also use those tokens for governance. You use those tokens for voting. Now there's different structures for how the DAOs do voting, but the point is when you are working at a DAO, you have a say in the direction. Now DAOs do have challenges with voter engagement and that's a whole other topic, but the point is when you are in a DAO and you are being compensated in tokens, with those tokens, you often get governance and you get voting rights, which allows you ownership in a new way that's not seen in existing companies. And since, since members own part of the project, they receive a share of project revenue. So no more busting your ass to climb the corporate ladder for the executive team to claim most of the rewards. Instead, remuneration is based, instead of remuneration being based off of office politics, seniority and power plays, it's about how much you contribute to the DAO and its level of success. A DAO's decentralization also means anyone can take the initiative to propose changes. This feature is valuable since members involved in the day-to-day -day running of the DAO have a better understanding of how to improve it. So tons of opportunity in DAOs. Uh, and opportunity to be compensated for what you work on. Now, I just want to highlight, um, you know, that there's always going to be two sides to every story. And I don't want to think that we're all, we're sitting here looking through rose colored glasses always. One of the challenges of, of DAOs is the nature of decentralization. You don't have a boss telling you what to do. You need to be more of a self-starter so DAOs work really well for people that are self-starters. They're harder for people that rely on clear direction. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for everybody within a DAO. I'm just pointing out uh, the, the nature of a decentralized organization means that there might be less clear direction, especially in the early stages of a DAO. The more formed DAOs, the DAOs that have been around for a couple of years, they have great processes and systems in place that ensure the, that the ship is steering in the right direction, that everybody knows what they're doing, that everyone has clear accountability, but that takes time. Okay, second thing we wanna look at is freedom. We're talking about the freedom that DAOs give you. They give you freedom to work when, where, how, and on what you want. I think that we all value freedom often more than anything else in life. Freedom might be the most valuable thing to us in life. I mean, we value financial freedom uh, and we value freedom of our time and freedom of how we decide what to do with, with that time. Uh, and so whether or not a DAO is going to give you financial freedom, that is, there's a huge range of that, you know, and I'm not going to discuss the, uh, the, the deep, inner workings of the financial opportunity that come from a DAO. Certainly a lot of DAOs have a lot of opportunity, give you a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money. 
a lot of DAOs also give you the opportunity to make more freelance level salary and make make money, be compensated always for what you do, but perhaps not you know give you the financial freedom that you're rich, right? Um, there's a range there. But what DAOs do certainly give you is the freedom for your work, for your time. They definitely give you that. And let's face it, most jobs these days don't require people to share a specific location. You can chat asynchronously or collaborate through cloud software. And those meetings that need needed to be face-to-face, well, now we've got Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Discord. We've got all these platforms that allow us to meet online in the metaverse <laughs> or what will some be the metaverse uh we we have all we all have the necessary tools to work however suits us best so why should we be confined to the office just because we've worked this way for decades doesn't mean it's the best option instead thou dow's value autonomy i mean hence it's it's in the name right uh, besides actual automation through smart contracts in the blockchain, each member is an autonomous contributor that decides how they work, when they work. All that matters is that you produce results. Now, autonomy doesn't mean it's a free-for-all. Members still need to meet deadlines and produce quality work. But as long as you deliver, no one cares if you did it in your pajamas, after chores, or in the shower. You know, However you work best, you want to do it down at the beach, you want to do it somewhere else in the world, you want to be traveling and nomadic throughout your, you know, throughout the month, that's fine. You have that freedom and flexibility. DAOs also don't expect you to dedicate your life to one project. Sure, most DAOs will have a core full-time team that pushes the project forward, but they'll also have many one-off and part-time contributors. These contributors will complete ad hoc tasks, often called bounties, for the DAO in return for a fee, like a freelancer. But why is that this important? Researchers have found that intrinsic factors such as interest in a project are the biggest drivers of worker happiness, even beating pay levels. And since DAOs are autonomous, no one expects you to cover tasks you don't choose. For example, projects like Wonderverse allow DAOs and contributors to connect what whether for long-term projects or for one-off tasks like creating a GIF or a YouTube video or making an image or writing a blog post. Uh, And you can't see my screen right now if you're listening to the podcast, but I have up here a photo of an example contributor dashboard. And what this contributor dashboard shows is it shows um, uh, work that is available. You know, it allows you to discover work or discover DAOs. Uh, and so on this current photo that I'm looking at, um, it's showing, uh, let's just see, there's a bunch of bounties up here. Bounty is like the DAO term for freelance work, essentially, that you get a bounty to do a task, right? Um, and so here we've got uh, create a GIF, uh, create a long YouTube video, uh, create a meme, uh, write an article, uh, attend a Twitter space or a Discord stage or an AMA. All of these things are currently up and available for bounty. So for a freelance worker or particular for a junior level worker, uh, it's a great way to come in. A lot of the bounties are no skill required. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, and it really, the great thing about this is it allows you to come in and work on different things. It allows you to test different things out. It allows you to dip your toes into a different DAO. Now, obviously there is a lot of work to manage freelance and there is that side of things. And, you know, I would never recommend, we actually talked a lot about Brian Peters with this. One of the challenges that a lot of people in DAOs face is burnout because you can find yourself working on so many projects because you don't have anybody, you don't have a manager or a friend or a colleague, nobody at your work knows how much you are doing because if you're working on different bounties, especially if you're working on different DAOs, which a lot of contributors do, then it's on you to manage your schedule. It's on you to manage your capacity and your workload. So you have to be very careful and don't take on too much. Uh, If you take on too much, you'll burn out and you won't enjoy it at all. So make sure that you're very cognizant with how you manage your time. Okay, 
Number three, the other thing that DAOs really are going to revolutionize for work is increased transparency, accountability, and fairness. So it's fair for traditional companies to practice two trends. It's sorry, it's rare. <laughs> it's fair. It's rare for traditional companies to practice two transparency and openness. Sure, they may say they're transparent, but the average employee will never have access to information that isn't necessary for their role. But how can workers know they're receiving fair treatment if managers don't disclose salary, workload, and performance data? How do they know their company is acting in their best interest? The truth is they don't. And in often cases, companies take advantage of this. Don't get me wrong. Many companies are very well run, but we've seen both sides of this coin. And that's how we end up with black swan events like Enron or Terra Luna. Uh, so there's, there's, there's bad actors and they take advantage of the closed operating system of closed books uh, to, you know, take advantage of their people and take advantage of their label, late labor. Uh, instead, DAOs use blockchain, and because DAOs use blockchain, it's transparent, it's immutable, and it's accessible by everyone. Um, now, I'm not going to get into uh, the details of blockchain. We've done many episodes on that, um, but I want to talk about operating as a DAO. What does that ensure? Uh, so one, operating as a DAO ensures no corporate red tape. Uh, if you have a great idea in a traditional company, and need quick funding to make it happen like there's just there's just no process in most companies right no way for you to get approval uh for you to get funding for you to get a team behind this um not to mention the decision maker is probably your manager uh so um that can often be a roadblock because your manager wants you focused on other things your manager has other priorities for you and your manager has their own uh objectives, which might not align with what you think is a good idea, even if it really is a good idea, and it might be the best thing for the company, uh, their, the setup and the processes and systems and the way that they work might not allow it. Uh, whereas in a DAO, processes are coded into the blockchain, removing the need for middle management. So all voting happens on chain, everyone can see it, it's all transparent. Um, democratic decision-making is different in the DAO. Uh, so in the case where your manager doesn't want you to do something or even worse, let's say your manager doesn't like you, then their opinion is just one of many in a DAO rather than their opinion, this one person being the only opinion. Um, so instead of hoping that your manager makes a fair decision about a new project you want to do, you can rely on the hive mind to make the right choice for the organization, not one person to make a biased choice based upon your relationship. Transparent financials. This is a big part about DAOs is if you have equity in a company, it's vital to understand its performance and you'll likely get updates, but you're relying on the party delivering the information uh, to be truthful and how often they update it. Uh, in a DAO, all this information is on chain and it's immutable, meaning you can gauge a project's health anytime. You can see the value of your tokens. You can see how many people are buying and selling. Uh, it means that you have also means you have access to remuneration data on all members of the DAO, ensuring fair distribution. You can see how much every member of the DAO is paid in the last season. You can see all of this on the blockchain. And the final thing is performance visibility. In traditional companies, it's easy for managers to gloss over the achievements of quiet contributors. It's often the loud, the social people, the charmers that that excel in traditional companies because relationships is such a big part, uh, often a bigger part than the actual work that you do. Whereas in the open, transparent nature of a DAO, members are celebrated and noticed for their actual contribution, not just by being the most social person. So performance, visibility changes. The final thing uh, that is a big part of how DAOs change work is the manner in which it opens up opportunity for those who do not necessarily have experience, particularly right now, as we are developing all these DAOs, there's just so much opportunity for new, new minds and just people who wanna hustle and get work done, but maybe don't necessarily have a ton of experience. If you wanna apply for a traditional job, 
that's not the case. The chances are you'll need years of experience. You'll need references. Um, you'll you'll need to meet that company's needs uh, in your skills, in your experience. So it's hard if you're a low experience person to get in the door. Um, on top of this, hiring managers will subject you to rigid screens that don't consider the nature of real world skills. For example, if a job application says you need five years of experience, but you put four and a half, good luck getting to the next stage. Now that might be a little extreme, but the idea is a lot of the way these companies, like traditional companies hire is off of systems and processes that are really set. DAOs are different, they're new, they're more fluid, they're learning. Uh, and that leads to more opportunity. Um, so if you pass the initial screening of a company, uh, let's say you're interviewing for a job, you pass the initial screening, and you'll be lucky if you only have a few tedious interview rounds before they make their decision. In contrast, it's just a very different hiring process, right? Um, DAOs are reinventing the traditional hiring process. Most DAOs they don't care where you worked previously, whether you worked at Google or you worked at the uh, at your local supermarket. As long as you have the skills, you'll get rewarded for them. On top of this, you won't have to go through a lengthy hiring process. In most cases, most cases you can actually just join a DAO. So it's completely different. I've heard the analogy that uh, when you when you join a traditional company, you they interview you, whereas when you join a DAO you interview them, right? It's kind of flipped on its head. And the way you interview them is you can join a DAO a few ways. Some DAOs require you to buy an NFT or buy their token to join. So you might have to buy something to have access, or you might have to buy a certain number of tokens to have access. Um, other DAOs don't require that. You can join the Discord and you can just be in. You can just join. You can see what it's like. You can attend because of this nature of transparency that is such at the core of DAOs, for a lot of DAOs, you can attend, you can join their Discord and you can attend their all hands meeting, you can join meetings, you can see what's going on. So you get a chance to see what they're like, you get a chance to interview them. Um, there's also the chance a lot of DAOs, you can, if you can't afford their token or their NFT, you can join and you can complete bounties in order to make tokens and make yourself a full member of the DAO, completing a task. Um, maybe you attend a webinar or again, you do something simple uh, to receive a bounty or to receive a POAP that can get you into the DAO. Um, these low barriers make DAOs excellent for gaining practical Web3 experience without taking on lengthy internships. All you need to do is show up, find a problem that needs solving and then deliver your solution. In saying that, not every DAO can pay for your effort. Uh, for example, an early stage DAO may pay you with an initially valueless native token, similar to startup equity. But if you need experience and believe in the project, con contributing to these DAOs can pay off in the long run. It also can get you a lot of relationships and a lot of opportunity. Let's not forget, so much opportunity comes from relationships, from meeting people, and DAOs are a great place to connect and to meet people. And who knows, maybe your native token goes to the moon and the project succeeds uh, and they offer you a full-time gig because your value, you're valuable and your contributions are great. Let's not guarantee that any token goes to the moon. Um, be aware, whenever you are joining a DAO and you are being compensated in their token, that that has its own considerations to go with it, uh, to understand the tokenomics, um, because that is an important factor. And particularly if that token is not does not have liquidity yet, meaning that token, you cannot trade that token uh, into another currency, um, such as getting it back into fiat, uh, then Keep that in mind. That token at current state has no value. It is only good for governance often. And that's often the case in starter DAOs. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You just need to be aware of what you're signing up for. And there's powerhouse DAOs 
already forming. There's a lot of powerhouse DAOs, and but DAOs are still an evolving concept, making now the perfect time to get in and shape the innovations of tomorrow. And the choices are endless. There's DAOs around media, there's DAOs around investments and venture capital, there's nonprofit DAOs, there's social network DAOs. Uh, there is pretty much a DAO for everything. Um, we even have, you know, some examples recently, Ukraine DAO, uh, which was a DAO that popped up in order to support uh, Ukraine in the current war. Uh, and they've, I can't remember what their numbers are, but they've raised millions um, to put towards uh, Ukraine and support them uh, in the war efforts. And so many DAOs uh, to participate in, many opportunities, um, and really, the world's your oyster. If you want to get inv involved in DAOs, uh, there's no shortage of opportunities out there. We'll make sure to link to a couple of uh, options of where you can find DAOs in the show notes. Um, but that's that's you know that's an opportunity out there for you guys. Uh, thanks for listening to the show today, everybody. Good luck joining DAOs. If you do join a DAO, uh, let us know. We'd love to hear where you join. Uh, maybe we want to interview you, get you on the podcast. Uh, we're always interested in interviewing DAO members and learning about the structures and the processes through which DAOs are operating. Thanks for listening in. Everybody have a fantastic week. And we'll see you next time. Jay Bird, out. Thank you for listening to Web3 Academy. We hope this helps you along your Web3 journey. And if it does, please share this episode and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Nothing in this podcast was financial advice. Crypto and Web3 can be risky. You can literally lose it all. In fact, if you invest on account of what we say, you probably will lose it all. So don't do that. In all honesty, the point of this podcast is to remove the noise of markets and price and focus on utility and implementation anyway. So you should not take any of this as financial advice. Thank you, friends, and see you in the next one.